my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Looking at my channel, I realized that I have not done a wrap up since I did a March and April wrap up back in the day. <laughs> So I really do want to talk about all the books that I've read recently, but I just like haven't been in the mood to film a monthly wrap up. But I, I read a lot of good books and a lot of books that are, you know, maybe worth talking about even if they aren't good. And I do want to talk about them. So I figured I'm going to restructure it a little bit and call it a recent reads series where I just talk about a few books each time that I've read over this past summer until I get through them all. It's going to be like a few parts of a series on my channel until I get current to where I am reading these days and I just kind of like to film it in short batches like this because I find filming wrap-ups to be kind of exhausting because I'm doing a lot of talking. So just buckle on in for the ride and here I'm going to just you know, casually chat about some books that I have read recently. Starting off, the first book that I have to talk about is Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan, which is the sequel to Wicked Saints. And this is a book that got a lot of back and forth when it first came out on booktube, but I absolutely loved it and I thought the sequel surpassed my expectations. So, you know, always love when that happens. Wicked Saints is a Slavic-inspired YA fantasy novel where we follow three main characters. A girl named Nadia who hears the whispers of the gods in her head, a prince surrounded by suitors and assassins, and a monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes. The paths of these three characters become entwined during a centuries-long war and they conspire together a plot to murder the king and each has their own reason for doing so. But it's just so much darker and more twisted than that. We have these two warring countries, Kalyazin and, oh, I'm not gonna be able to say this right, Transylvania. They each kind of have their own system of magic and each one believes that their magic and the religion that the magic stems from is the superior version and that is kind of the emphasis behind the war and so in Nadia's country there are these things called clerics which are kind of like the conduits for the saints and the cleric will have like a specific specific patron saint and they'll be able to hear the saint in their head and be able to perform the magic of that saint. It was really really interesting and very like kind of like a very like a mind meld kind of thing because the gods are in these clerics heads and Nadia has one main god but she actually can hear the whole pantheon of gods in her head which makes her like a very very special cleric especially in a day and age where the clerics are dying out. In Transylvania, where Seraphin and Malakiaj are from, it's all blood magic, so basically they cut themselves, so there is like a trigger for self harm because of the blood magic in here. Um, and using their blood, they can pour it like on these spell books that they have, and then they will be able to do it that way. And basically, like the saints view this blood magic as heretical, and like the People that practice the blood magic are like, why are you relying on these saints? The saints are corrupt, blah, blah, blah. So it's like a, an ideological war between these two. And it's very, very intricate and interesting the way that it is set up. And I just was so, so like drawn into the way that it's just very detailed. And that really makes you think. And I really, really enjoy that in a fantasy. So of course... Now, more specifically onto Ruthless Gods, I got this really cool art print from Wednesday Books. It's just awesome. Um, and if you like, the first book has like this very specific like dreamlike scene that has this beautiful, mythical, gorgeous writing that it's very like cerebral almost, and it has moths in it, so that's where the moth print comes from. But in the sequel, we are following our three main characters again. The group is torn apart. Nadia doesn't trust her magic anymore. Seraphin is fighting off a voice in his head and Malakiaj is at war with who he has become. And so their fates are still like all intertwined and they just go on a journey and their journey takes them unexpected places, which just sounds like the most vague thing ever, but like darkness never works alone. The the level of intricacy in this world building really just always astounds me and I think that this book leveled it up again, especially with the whole system of the gods and the saints and how like the saints came to be and it's just like this horror like forest road trip almost, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. And like the characters are constantly at one another's throats and I just think that the dynamic between the three main characters is really interesting because 
like they can't ever fully trust one another and they have a lot of issues between them all. It's very interesting to see how the characters dynamic gets around one another as they each go towards their own goals and like especially Malakiaj. What's really interesting about this book is we get Nadia and Seraphin's perspectives but we don't get Malakiaj's perspective even though he is the third main character and that kind of um, sets the stage for this book a little bit because we kind of can always see what's going on in Nadia's head, see what's going on in Seraphin's head but we never know white what's going on with Malakiaj we only see him through the eyes of others so it's kind of hard to get like a read on him as a character and I think that it makes for the book it makes the book really enticing because you like don't know and you want to see what he's gonna do because he's always kind of a wild card and somehow this romance in this book manages to be both enemies and lovers we have enemies to lovers but have you ever read enemies and lovers because that's what this is and they're just like constantly back and forth with one another and like trying to like deny their attraction but they're still kind of enemies but they also kind of like love each other and it's just the dynamic is just it's so great it's so interesting to read about it keeps me on my toes i have a lot of love for the series i really really enjoyed this sequel and then the conclusion of the trilogy of blessed monsters is coming out next year and of course i'm so excited for it because i just think it's going to be like really really good and take us to some very interesting places because I'm just really impressed with the world building and the character dynamics of this series and I can't wait to see where the finale leads us. The next book that I read was The Betrothed by Kiara Cass and I was so so looking forward to this one. It just sounded really fun but unfortunately it was a huge huge letdown and it's like one of the only books I've ever given one star but it was so bad. It was so bad. I don't usually one star books but like I could barely even finish it like it was just painfully bad so anyways let me discuss more about what the betrothed is and why it, i thought it was just not good so king jameson declares his love for lady hollis bright and hollis is like completely shocked and thrilled because of course she's going to be the future queen and she has grown up at the castle vying for the king's attention among many of the other ladies her whole life and she's basically been groomed for this. But Hollis realizes that falling in love with a king and being the queen might not be the happily ever after that she has always been wanting. And when she meets a commoner with a mysterious power to see right into her heart, she finds that the future she really wants is one that she never thought to imagine. Okay. So this the story sounds like it can be very, very like interesting, very juicy. She's betrothed to the king and then all of a sudden she falls into this whirlwind romance with this commoner at the castle and like, you know, that's just kind of like the stuff that historical dramas and romances are made out of and it like it just did not, it did not deliver. It did not deliver. It did not deliver. And here's why. Because when she was with the king and their romance was progressing, even if she wasn't like head over heels in love with him, like they still had like a nice back and forth and like you could see that she was slowly kind of falling for him. And then all of a sudden there's this guy and she's like, you know, ready to give it all up for him. But they have no chemistry whatsoever i don't know what she saw in him that she's just like yeah like i don't really feel like being queen anymore and was gonna just like have the whole like patrol though blow up in her face for this guy that she like saw him when he entered the hall and like he had these really nice blue eyes and like they connected their eyes like their their stares connected and like that that you know that was pretty much it for her it sealed the deal and like even like their conversations were just like so not convincing did not like stir anything within me that i was like wow like you know if this is like true love she really could just leave the crown like it was just it was boring i don't know what she saw in him that would make her give it all up because he didn't really have a personality i mean the king didn't really have a personality did she hollis herself have a personality like a little bit but she probably had the most personality out of the whole cast and like oh my god it was just it was painful to read and then like it was set in this like alternate medieval like world so just like made of kingdoms and stuff but it wasn't fantasy and then you know like some like political stuff was thrown in there and it was just like not i don't i don't know it was just weird and then the ending was very 
an interesting choice. It was a very interesting choice. I don't know how I feel about it. I was just happy that the book was over. It was, just, it was just bad. I don't know what else to say besides the fact that the plot made no sense because it was supposed to be character and emotionally driven and the characters were not there and the emotions were not there. Therefore, the plot was not there. And with that, that is all I'm going to say. The next book that I am discussing is The Jewel Thief by Jan Mobley and I actually got this arc from Penguin at ALA Midwinter Festival. This one is a historical fiction novel set during King Louis the 14th's reign in France. It really drew me in and it was like very intricate and I really enjoyed it. So Juliet is the daughter of the king's prized jewel maker and when Louis acquires the Tavernier Violet, which is today the Hope Diamond, she sees it as a chance for her family to rise in the king's esteem and to, you know, acquire riches and a title and just a really good chance for her family to advance in society. However, her ambition brings her family close to ruin and she is actually arrested and charged with stealing the diamond. And has one final night in her jail cell to prove her innocence to the king and recording her story is Renee, her former flame who will barely look her way due to her betrayal. So the structure of the story is really interesting because it opens up during Juliet's arrest and we see her being brought into the Bastille and she basically is being questioned by the king and they bring Renee in who's like this clerk and they you know had a fling and so he's her past lover and he basically has to record the story of what happened as like her one final chance for her to prove her innocence to the king. So it's a very interesting setup and then it's kind of like we go back and forth between her in the jail cell with Renee and the story that she's narrating because she's trying to explain to Renee everything that happened and her innocence and it's really cool the way that it's told um, back and forth between like the present and like going into the past. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, oh, I ended up giving this book 4.5 stars by the way. And what's really cool is like the use of the different tenses because like obviously we have like she's telling the story about the past um, and then she's like in the present. One thing that I thought was interesting is because she's telling the story to Renee, she's using the word like, oh, you did this and you did that, which normally I don't really like second tense in books, but because of the storytelling aspect where she is telling a story where to Renee, who is in the story, it just made it feel like very emotional because she's trying to explain her emotions to him and like why she really is innocent and why she did what she did. And I just thought that it made for a more emotional impact in the storytelling aspect. And it was just really really interesting to see like kind of the first of all like how a jeweler worked and how jewelry making worked back before they had all modern technology to like shape these diamonds and stuff like that because obviously you couldn't just plug it in a machine and let it go like you had to hand calculate all of the angles and like use these very rudimentary tools and i found myself researching a lot about diamond making while i was reading this book just because i thought it was so interesting and reading up on the hope diamond so i really love when books kind of prompt me to research more about a topic that I would have just never found myself like on the Google page for if not from a book. So I always enjoy that aspect. Basically like throughout the novel you can tell that Julia is a young girl that has made many mistakes and it's kind of led her here all the way to the Bastille but that she really had like pure intentions at heart and she really wanted what was best for her family and got wrapped up in this whole hope in this whole diamond crisis and so it was a very emotionally riveting historic why historical drama if anyone likes that kind of thing please make sure to check out this book because i haven't really seen anyone talk about it but i really enjoyed it i thought it was a really solid historical romance slash fiction book the next book that i read is happiness volume one by shuzo oshimi and this is a the start of a vampire manga series so nothing interesting is happening in Makoto Ozaki's first year of high school. His life is basically a series of quiet humiliations, low-grade bullies, unreliable friends, and all that stuff. But one night, a pale thin girl knocks him to the ground in an alley and offers him a choice. And basically this is the story of him becoming a vampire. And I end up giving it four stars. I thought it was a really solid start to this manga series. And I really enjoyed the art style. I thought that the whole vampire aspect was done really well. And the way that the art was used to like portray like the hunger and the thirst. And we kind of have this like girl that's going around 
and turn him into a vampire and kind of like how that mystery is going to unfold so i can't wait to continue on with this manga and see where it goes i think it's only 10 volumes in total so yeah i will be hopefully picking up the rest in the future and then the last book that I have to talk about today is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a book that I've literally had on my shelf for years and never read. And I read it and I'm like, why did I not read this sooner? Because it's so good. And I just like really, really loved it so, so much. So Spence's world has been under attack for decades. She lived with the human colony on this abandoned planet and her and her people live underground. And they have for the last few generations after fleeing something and that something has kind of been lost to time with as the generations go on um so now pilots are the heroes of what remains of the human race and they are basically fighting back against these aliens known as the krell who continually swoop in on the planet and try and destroy the place where the humans are residing so ever since Spensa has been a little girl, she's always dreamed of joining the flight academy and becoming a pilot and fighting back against these Krell. She's so determined to do this, um, but her fate is intertwined with her father's and the fact that he was branded as a coward after he abandoned his flight and was killed in action. And since she is known as a daughter of a coward, her chances of attending flight school are slim to none. Even though her chances are supremely low, Spencer will not give up and an accidental discover in a long forgotten cavern just might be able to provide her with a way to claim the stars. I loved this book so much. The sci-fi world that Brandon Sanderson is able to create is just so interesting and I love how the plot just like slowly unfolds very very slowly kind of like as our main character learns more about what's going on you learn more about what's going on and it always constantly keeps you wanting to know more about it which is i just think the best world building when it gives you enough to know what's going on but just like keeps you wanting more keeping what keeping you wanting to keep reading to find out what else is going to happen keeping you engaged and i think brandon sanderson is such an engaging writer another aspect i really loved about this book is that there were diagrams so we get diagrams of what all the ships look like and I just think that's really fun in a sci-fi book especially because you can kind of just with aliens go out there and like be creative and kind of do whatever you want so I really thought it was very nice to have the diagrams because it helped me with my like visualizations um also there is you can tell that this book is very very well researched because there's a lot of talk of like the physics of flying but never like enough that it you know that it like follows the laws of physics and that it makes sense but not enough like if you don't like pay that much attention to it like it's not going to draw away from the story if you like don't fully understand it or anything like that it's just kind of fun to see like that it is very very well researched i just like i think the thing that really gripped me about the story is i just adore spensa so much as a character like she's like short and feisty and she will absolutely not give up on her dream no matter what and i just really really admired that about her and the side characters were also amazing mbot is this like ai character and like he just is so funny and like had these like really great one-liners and always had me laughing the thing that really really describes like why i love spensa is this quote that i have underlined here and says scud it was annoying to have to look up at him i leaped out to my seat to gain a height advantage for the argument an action that seemed to surprise him he cocked his head what <laughs> always attack from a position of superior advantage i said when this is done jerk face i will hold your tarnished and melted pin up as my trophy as your smoldering ship marks your pyre and the final resting place of your crushed and broken corpse <laughs> And this was like over like something very like not serious. So she's very, very like quick to be defensive like that just because she's always been told that she's the daughter of a coward and all that. But it's really interesting to see like as she's in this flight and she bonds with the, her fellow crew, how she really starts to break down the shell of being so independent, glows off and really becomes part of the team. And I really loved like all the characters on the team and all the way their different personalities work together. Um, and just the action in here is just like, really really good i think brandon Sanderson can write fight scenes very well and especially now we have the whole aspect of like fights in space is just really fun because it's not i don't read a lot of sci-fi so i don't really get that a lot and i just absolutely had such a blast reading it this book was honestly just such an engaging sci-fi and if you are new to sci-fi and want a, like a place to start i think that this book is really good starting spot just because it is has very strong characters and it's not too buckled down by the spacey descriptions i guess but still so the world building is just so interesting and 
really really loved it and that is it for today's recent reads i hope you enjoyed this format of video i personally enjoyed it because i don't have to talk about 20 books in one video which if you've ever done that you know how freaking exhausting it is um please look forward to more in this series i just really i'm happy that i'm having a chance to talk about these books in a way in a format that's like less stressful for me <laughs> um and let me know if you've read any of these books and any of your thoughts on them and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one